Hello everyone, this is Christian Melodix Town Interactive, and in this video we are going to stick with what we've been doing for the past view and uh, add in a new control. In particular, that control is the select. So we'll have a select that we bind to some options. Those options have, of course, some label, and if a user selects an, a label, we'll get the value to pop up in our form data. And uh, this will be the first control where we have some information by default being passed in from the component so we'll, we'll take care of that also uh, when I did the video I did forget to update this actual template string here to show these options so that'll be a little uh, tack on at the end there I do also want to remind everyone that you can find an article for or a link to the article for this video in the description below let's go ahead and get started here so just like we did in the previous video since we're going to add a new component first thing that we're going to do is to create a template for it and it helps if I'm in the, focusing the right program there so let's do controls mix in pug oops we need to bring it up a bit probably good there all right so we want the select so mix in select no i don't need any help and select for the moment we'll just do the form control name t name save that good to go there and now of course we need to create our control here so we have the select folder conveniently already made once again so let's choose add new file xc-select dot component dot pug and that's going to be include up to controls mixins dot pug and let's go down one form control group and conveniently enough just select so that's good Back to our files, we'll create a component.scss and in this import one controls.mixins.scss include form control group. Let's quickly go away. Perfect. And of course now the component definition. Let's see select dot component dot ts and ng components call it uh xc dash select and xc select perfect stop hitting enter as usual come up here we import oops how's it gonna know where or what so up one xc form spell it right from so now we have it and what do we want form control oops sexy form control perfect and providers since I'm doing this a lot I've created another snippet let's see if this one works correctly forward ref and we want XE form control to give us XE select component. Perfect. All right. And uh, not perfect. So it helps if we import the forward ref. We need to extend our component form control. Hey, look at that. Made a mistake here. So there's some generics for our component or select here so right now we'll just put the t value so that we can give the t value over here and we need to do the whole protected get tag name which will return uh, this something no 
Now we're good there. So let's close that for a minute here. Let's go to the sidebar. And we need to export again from our controls index.ts. Export star from select. Select components. Great. Done there. And uh, of course the forms module. So we'll put it right here. Let's see, select component, put in our declarations, and that's done. All right. Now let's find out whether we've broken everything. So basic example dot component dot pug. Let's add the select in. Select. Wait, oop. Mm, so many quotes, label, select, name, select, good. Grab the template for the moment. The TS come up here. Let's make us a select one. Perfect, save it, go back to the browser. And just to refresh to make sure, so everything's working, we have a select. Not very useful, we're just there to look good. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code and we need to add some options here. Let's close that for now. First we will go into the controls, mixin.pug. Back to our select here, and we'll do option. I think that I made an ng4 snippet. I did. So ng4, we're going to put some. We're going to put a getter on our component that's of t options. Next, we'll say the ng value. So we'll set the value of the control here. And yeah, what's that? So we don't really know what the form of the option is going to be. We'll put a default for a you know, default option, but uh, so we're gonna have a, a function method you know, that's going to convert the option, which is x in this case, to its value. And then we'll do our string interpolation out here. And we'll do option label. So we'll have a function that will do the same thing to convert an option to a label. Save that. So now back to the XE select component. Come down here, we need the ability to have the user give us that. So we'll come up here, include the input uh, decorator. So we'll have input, options, and private read only. Options is going to be a T option. Oh. What is T option? Who knows what that is? So we need a T option here. So now T option, it's gonna be a T option array and it's going to start off with null. All right, that input and we're gonna have option label and private read only option label. So option label is uh, something that's going to take in, like I said, a T option, and it is going to spit out the value. So we're going to have default value here, and that's going to be return, and we'll just cast the object, the option that's passed in as any, and then we'll do the label property from it. Input option value. So it's private read only option value. Oh, T option and return same deal. O as any, and we'll pluck off the value from it. Oh, this is my semicolon up there. Probably, yeah, we don't get rid of that one. 
All right, so now we mentioned, remember that uh, we had those getters that we had and prefix with a T and all over the place in the template. So we need a get T options. And that just returns this dot options. Private get T option label, which surprise, surprise, just returns the option label function get the option value same deal let's that option value save it perfect so we're good there so we have a way to pass options to our select but now we need to actually give them some options. So let's go into the basic example component.ts file, I guess, to start with. And let me just copy this. So we're going to have something, where are we at? T options, let's put it right here. So our option, like I said, you know, it's an array and the array contains uh, objects and those objects have a label and a value property so we'll just use the defaults without you know having to make any corrections and then uh, what we want now is to say this is the first time if we come back up to our snippets here we're actually doing something within the component to make the snippet work right so let's go ahead and move this thing down a bit so now we will have a component I'm going to use the back ticks there, put in our options, and then I want to dedent those bad boys, save them, cross our fingers back to the browser. You can see that this component thing is working over here showing us. Come down here, it shows us the options in the whole full-blown thing. And the real thing, do we have any options? No, no error either. So I messed something up. Oh yes, jumping the gun. Ignore the fact that I tried to check, check that. So we have the options within the basic example component. Let's we'll close that. What we need though is basic example component pug. We actually need to bind that to the options input. So options equals T options, save it. Now we'll come back and there are our options. Maybe even make it even bigger. So we have the options in there. If I click on label, we'll see the select is shown in the data is null. Click on it. Now label two, value two, label three, value three, so on and so forth. So great. It's working as we like. Now we are not done though. So if we go back to that select component, this whole options, option label, option value, rigmarole that we're doing here, this is going to be needed again, specifically for the radio group. It's basically the same deal, just displayed in a different way. And uh, so what we're gonna do is to extract the information, this kind of you know, properties and such inputs, and we're gonna make another base class for it. So let's go here, and we're in the controls folder. Let's create a new file and XC, I call it XC options form control. Get a long name. All right. So basically all that we were gonna need is the some information from here. So let's just let's just do this. Let's just copy these, put them in here. It's no longer up one, it's in the same level. So we don't need to, we're not defining a component, so we won't need the forward ref either. So now let's say export abstract class XC options form control. We're going to pass in T value, T option. And this thing is going to extend Extend um, XE form control, and that needs T value. All right, so we're good to go there. Let's jump back to our select. All of this 
leaves comes over here so we're good to go there back to our um, select component what we need is to pull in import from and we need the options form control so now we can do this XC options form control and what we'll do is instead of Inheriting from form control will inherit here. Of course, we need to not at, not before, but after T option. All right, so we'll close that. Once again, start crossing fingers. Make sure everything is. We even refresh to make sure everything still seems to be working correctly. So we're good to go there. Now we're going to make a few, a couple adjustments. May not need these, depending on how you're styling. You know, if you're following along, styling a project, whatever. But OCD is kicking in. This select is styled a lot different than this input here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So back to Visual Studio Code. The styling is coming from the forms. This is contained within the SAS folder base so that came from bidders forms underscore forms there so we have this all text box thing here text inputs I'm just gonna slap on a select at the end now if we just do that we have a problem because we'll lose our little you know the um, select has this little arrow here and uh, we want to keep that so we if we do appearance nothing none it'll go away so let's just take this come down here should have done this before I added that right and we're missing a curly brace so there let's get rid of that from up here great so now the select is styled a little bit like that uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it so it's real close to it now the unfortunate side is I'll take a screenshot if we look at it that's 40.75 pixels high and if we look at this this thing is 35.5667 pixels so we need to adjust those sizes I'm going to see I did the calculation in Chrome let's see if this is displaying the same amount see if it works the same so we'll come down here we'll add a little select and what we need to do is to say adjust this padding here so we have this variable for base spacing and uh, you'll see somewhere I don't know it's base spacing right here padding divided by three so we are wanting to adjust the top and bottom padding a little bit a little bit meaning subtract off one or point one five six two five em and I just want to keep the base spacing the same for left and right. I guess I could have just done top and bottom there. Who knows? Whatever. So now let's take a look. I said these sizes matched up in Chrome, but let's see. What do we have now? 35.75. And this one was some 35.566 blah 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 so it's not exact but uh, at least it's enough that I can't tell when I'm looking at it for right now <laughs> that side would be if they became in line with each other then you might be able to tell but the last thing that we want to change is uh, who knows if you can see it here but you can see these things are bothering me the fact that they are a little bit higher than the other so let's change that real quick stop clicking on the wrong thing so we're good with that file we need to go back into the basic example component SCSS in this case where actually not where I need to be so inside the control row all I'm going to do is modify the styling for the pre's a little bit and we'll say margin top to zero save it take a look now we're in line and uh, I can feel happy with myself all right so like I said in this video we've created the select component and keyed everything up so that we can do the uh, radio group or radio buttons in the next video
And here you thought that you were done hearing from me in this video. So just like I'm doing the intro for this one, like I said, I forgot to update the template here. So let's go in and take care of that. And close that file there. And we need to go to the basic example component.ts file. We're in here. What are we fixing? We are fixing, well, here. I have it out here. What we need to add to our template here. Where are we at? Select template and put in the options. Let's go ahead and save that. Head on back over here. So now we have our options being displayed or the uh, template is updated there. Template is updated down here. And now we are good to go. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.